So motivation is a word, right? It's, it's, a, it's a label that we put a set of events in our brain. Uh, what you actually want is the outcome of that. You want to do things that when, you, when it's hard. So I think that there are a few kind of things that, that we know work. One is uh, evidence of past successes. If I sit with you and I go back to your memories and I reframe them as successes, suddenly the current event that's the same is a success. So I think that one, one thing is like having success stories and identification stories. As in you find there's a lot of people out there. There was a person that is like you that had similar experience and chose the thing that you want to choose. Find this person or these people and it's going to rub into you. So I, I get asked by my students often, how do I become funnier? How do I become uh, smarter? And, and like my one tip that I give them all the time is surround yourself by people that you want to be like. You want to be funny? Just sit next to comedians. Just go to the same room they are and just sit next to them. It's going to rub onto you by osmosis because it's just, it's the environment that is around us that really changes everything. And, and other people said that before, but I'll tell you the neuroscience behind that. We know now that uh, brains interact act with each other through language in a way that synchronizes the brains. So when I talk to you right now, if you're engaged with what I say, it means that if we scan our brain right now, our brains are going to look alike, more than yours and someone on the street that isn't mm. here. So two people in the same room, as soon as they kind of interact, their brains literally start kind of, if you want, pulsing in the same way. Parts of the brain light up in the same way, parts shut down. So we actually are affecting, this is how we affect each other. This is how communication made humans who they are. This is the one thing that makes us better than all the other animals because we are able to communicate using language, affect each other's brain and create narratives that don't exist together. We both believe in things that we've never seen before, like God or, or, or ideas that like democracy or, or money. Like those things we invented and we can communicate them and create this image in people's brains and they all share this thing. So in the same way, if you surround yourself by people that you want to be like, you hear them communicate, they change your brain and it's going to rub onto you. You will actually become funnier if you sit and listen to funny people next to you. You actually become more motivated if you're next to people that are motivated. The next version of that, if you cannot find them, if you're sitting right now in a rural part of Alaska and you can't just find yourself in Los Angeles with the people you want to be with, is to actually just look at them on videos, on books. And that's the way our brain basically gets content and change. So changing brains happens many, many ways, but the easiest one that everyone can try is to say what kind of world I want to be in and bring this world to you in the form of movies, stories, TV shows, or people. And do you think when you're doing that, that it's um, you're getting into a repetitive brain firing pattern that ultimately wires? You actually change your brain. So so we didn't mention the, the science behind it much like in terms of what we do, but we put electrodes into people's brains and we look at their brains while things happen to them. And we actually see it in, happen in, in action. We see how the brain changes when people communicate. We see how your brain aligns with the movie and when you tell someone else the story of the movie their brain aligns with your brain but aligns also with the brain of the director of the movie Whoa. so communication is this mechanism by which information flows between brains and changes the brains and actually if you want to take it one step above this is also how we change ourselves because we talk to ourselves all the time you walk uh, you drive your car or you walk to to work and you're just alone with yourself and you communicate you also change your brain you kind of solidify the things that you want to be more like and you suppress the ones you don't want so we always talk and those voices those are basically the other characters in our brain that talk to each other, you kind of choose which ones to give more weight to. So this is how you become a better person you want to be. So we actually now play with things that change behavior during the night when you're sleeping in the following way. So th this is a, another new thing from the last 10 years. Learn, change, and transfer overnight. So if you look at the night, if you go to sleep and for eight hours sleep, it's not really a uniform experience. Night is not really just you fall asleep and you spend eight hours just in the same state. You actually have phases, we call them stages and cycles. And there have different things that happen in in them. And one of them is the stage where we're dreaming. That's when we, our brain basically simulates future options and shows us a movie of things that could happen and allow us to live through them, thinking they're reality. It's the ultimate VR. We actually live life thinking that we're there, thinking how it would be to live with her in Alaska or to quit the job and move to Vancouver. Really have this experience, filter it through our emotions, and then wake up with the answer what to do. This is one stage, but there's another stage. It's really interesting. Stage three and four of the sleep. We call it slow wave sleep. It's a stage of the night. Where your brain essentially takes all the experiences from the day before and weights them and chooses which ones to keep and which ones to take out. Out. So if you think about life, when you go through your day, there are many, many moments that you call the present. About every one and a half second, you have a different present, mm. and then it goes into the past. It becomes a memory, and you go to the next moment, and you live it, and then you store it in a memory. Then when you go to sleep, your brain looks at all those 50,000 moments that you had and says, okay, when I walked from home to the bank, I had 20 of those moments. They're not really important. I should compress them into one, keep just one, remove the others. When I kissed her, it was a moment that I want to remember every fraction of. So I want to keep all of them individually as like one like big 
let's talk of like experiences. Mm. Your brain does that during slow wave sleep, during this moment. It kind of chooses out of all of them and picks the ones that are important. What we learned in the last five years is that you can actually do things to you at this stage when you're sleeping that will make you change the pointer. We can choose for you to focus on the walk to the bank rather than the kiss. And in doing so, we're going to basically make you strengthen those memories at the expense of others. We do that by using uh, smells or sounds that we play to your ears in the right moment the smell of the And you kiss. judge that right moment because you're actually watching like a readout right. of what's it going on. It has to be on, done. Right? The, the modern thing is that you can't really do it at home. You can't just spray the smell in the room all the time. You have to do it in the right moment because that if you do, if you just spray smell in the room, it's going to wash out. You have to kind of target the brain in the right moment, but then the brain is going to say, I smell this thing. This means that I want to focus on this moment and strengthen that. And what the experiments show is that you can actually make a person learn things when they're sleeping. You can actually change their behavior. You can make them uh, uh, choose to focus on different behaviors that they want to change and wake up not doing this thing, you can actually do things. So the, the classical experiment that was really popular in the last three years was people come to the lab and they're smokers and they wanna quit. They go to sleep for two hours and the experimenters wait for the moment when their brain is in this state where it's kind of listening to the outside world and reassessing life. Then they spray the smell of nicotine into their nose, making their brain think, okay, out of all the memories I have, let's focus on those that have to do with smoking. Mm. And then immediately after, they blast the brain with the smell of rotten, the smell of rotten eggs, which basically makes the brain rewire and, and, and take nicotine and wire it with like bad experiences. So you do that a few times when they're sleeping, they wake up, they have no idea what happened, but then suddenly they say, I don't really want to smoke anymore. For a few days, they actually change their behavior. They don't want to smoke, not knowing what happened. They just came, took a nap, wake up, and they don't want to smoke. This is changing behavior, neuroscience. Wow. You find them moment you hit the brain with it you change the wiring and the person wakes up a different person